Now let's work a big example and calculate the total weighted average cost of capital for the firm. Now this is a firm that only has financing from equity and debt, as you can see here. And we have the following information about the firm's equity and about their debt. On the equity side, they have 50 million shares outstanding that have a market price of $80 per share. The firm has a beta of 1.5, a market risk premium of 9%. And remember that the market risk premium is the entire term, the expected return on the market minus the risk-free rate, right? So here I'm saving you a step in the capital asset pricing model by giving you the market risk premium directly. There's risk-free rate outstanding in the market of 5%. So clearly we're gonna use the uh, capital asset pricing model to calculate the cost of equity. On the debt side, we have 1 billion in debt outstanding. That's the total market value of the firm's debt. Uh, I, let me change this. Uh, the price of the debt is $1,100, All right? So that's the current present value or price of the bonds. They have a coupon rate of 9% that's paid semi-annually. The bonds outstanding are 15 years to maturity and they have a tax rate of 40%, okay? So we wanna know what's the weighted average cost of capital for the firm, and that means we need to do a few things. First, we need to calculate the total market value of equity and market value of debt because we need to calculate the uh, respective capital structure weights. Then we calculate the cost of debt and the cost of equity Finally, we throw it all together to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. So we'll start with the market values, the market value of equity, or rather the market value of any share of any financing, any security, is the number of shares times the price per share, right? or the number of financial state instruments times the price per instrument. So uh, for equity, that's the number of shares. There are 50 million shares times the price per share. That's $80 per share. That gives us a market value of the equity in the firm of $4 billion. On the debt side, this is the number of bonds times the price per bond. Now, I know one of these things, I'm given that outright, I'm given the price, the price is $1,100. I don't know off this, on, on the face of it, how many bonds I, I have. I don't have the number of bonds, I have the face value of the bonds outstanding. So I am given the total face value of $1 billion. What I have to remember here though, is that the face value of a single bond is always a thousand. So to calculate how many bonds I have outstanding, I simply divide the total face value by the face value of an individual bond. And I get that I must have 1 million bonds outstanding. So now I can come back here and I can multiply the number of bonds, which is a million, times the price per bond, which is 1100, and I get 1.1 billion. So now the value of the firm is the value of its equity plus the market value of its debt, and that is 5.1 billion. I can use this information to calculate the weights of each source of financing, each capital source of capital. The weight of equity is the market value of equity divided by the market value of the firm. So 4 billion divided by 5.1 billion gives me 78.43% of the firm is financed using equity. On the debt side, the remainder will be debt, but we can go ahead and calculate it directly. 
the market value of debt is 1.1 million the market value of the firm 5.1 billion and the weight of the firm that has financed been using debt 21.57 percent so now that i have my capital structure weights what remains is for me to calculate the cost of capital for both my equity and debt and then use all of that to calculate the weighted average cost of capital and it doesn't matter what order you go in but we'll start with the cost of debt right? And remember that the cost of debt is the yield to maturity on the firm's outstanding bonds. This is the, this is the level, the coupon, that a firm would have to pay if they issued a new bond today. So the yield to maturity means solving for the IY of the bond, solving for the current market rate. We've got to plug everything else in. We start with the face value of the bond, which is always 1000 the price of the bond is its present value, and we're given the price at $1,100. In is our time remaining until the bond matures, and there are 15 years till maturity, but this is a semi-annual bond, so we need to multiply by two to get 30 semi-annual periods. Payment is the coupon payment for a bond, and it's always the coupon payment, and the coupon payment is 9% or the coupon rate times the face value. And in this case, divided by two because this is a semi-annual bond. So I will have a coupon payment of $45 every semi-annual period. Now I can solve for the yield to maturity by computing my IY. and get 3.9268%. But I recognize that this is a semi-annual solution because the calculator always keeps the output in the same periods as the inputs. So if I have semi-annual inputs, I get a semi-annual output. But a yield to maturity is always at an annual level, so I need to multiply by two to get the annual cost of debt or the annual yield to maturity, 7.853%. And this is our D, the firm's cost of debt. Next, I need to solve for the cost of equity. And the firm's cost of equity is solved by the capital asset pricing model. The firm's cost of equity is the expected return on its equity. So RE, the cost of equity, we will solve for using the CAPM, right? And the CAPM says that the expected return on this firm has to be equal to the risk-free rate plus the beta on the asset times the market risk premium, which is the expected return on the market minus the risk-free rate, right? In other words, this whole term is the market risk premium. Now we're given all of this information in the problem, in this setup. The risk-free rate is 5%. The beta is 1.5. And we're given the market risk premium directly at 9%, right? So don't subtract this, don't subtract the risk-free rate twice. You're already given the market risk premium. I saved you a step. So the cost of equity is the expected return and that is 18.5%. Okay. Now the last step for us then is to plug all of this into the formula for the weighted average cost of capital. The weighted average cost of capital is the weight of each source of capital times the cost of each source of capital, with one caveat that the cost of debt is reduced by the interest tax shield. So we multiply the cost of debt times one minus the tax rate to account for the fact that a firm is allowed to deduct its interest payments before it calculates its tax liability. This is a valuable thing for a firm, and so we wanna make sure that we don't ignore it when we 
uh, analyze a firm's uh, cash flows and projects. So now we just plug in, all of this has been calculated and known. The weight of the firm's equity, 78.43% of the firm has been financed using equity. And the cost of the firm's equity is 18.5%. Plus the weight of the firm's debt is 21.57%. And the cost of the firm's debt is 7.853%. Finally, the cost of debt needs to be reduced by one minus the firm's tax rate. Do our algebra correctly and watch our order of operations and we get a weighted average cost of capital of 15.53%. Now definitely expect to see a problem like this on the exam, only like the other big problems that we work in the class, this will be broken up into a series of four questions or so, where you have to do each part individually. So first you'll do the weights, and then you'll do the costs, and then you'll do the WAC. Okay? So uh, make sure that you can do each one of these. We've done all of this stuff before individually. We're just now putting it together in a different way. Okay?